What's up gamers, Aaron Shack here, and we've got a new light that I want to look at here on the channel. This is the Andour W140 RGB LED video light, and uh, this is the box here. This is a wonderful little device, and it's very small and portable uh, in comparison to my iPhone 10 or a pack of Avengers 5 gum. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a small and easy to use device. And just taking a look at it, there's your screen. You've got a little clip on the top here, which you can pull back. And you've got a mount there, a shoe mount. Old shoe, I believe they call it. And then, of course, on the right side, you have a quarter inch screw. On the bottom, you have a quarter inch screw. So those are various mounting options if you're mounting it to a camera or a tripod or some sort of device, whatever you're trying to do. Um, other things that are prevalent in this is that we have these little like scrolly wheels on the side here, but they also push in as buttons. And then of course you've got a USB-C right there. So you can charge up this thing and, and it says uh, 3.7 volts at 3700 mAh. Makes sense to all you tech nerds. So it's a, it's a pretty large capacity and you just use that USB-C uh, charging cable, which it does happen to come with right there. Everything you see, you know, these little gadgets here, these we will go through and are included in the box uh, that I purchased via Amazon. So now to turn this puppy on, we just hold this scrolly wheel button right here. You just press, press in on the scrolly thing. Yeah, there it is. And this thing is bright. Um, so this is kind of the, like the very bright white like daylight option here. And it's pretty cool. And the, the better part about this that makes it, you know, I think better than, you know, if I were to somehow use the Logitech Lytra Beam or carrying around just various other, like I even have the, the Loom Cube thing, which has like color filters that you put over the LED light, which really limits you in terms of like what colors you can actually use because it's really just like red, green, blue. You can't really like go between shades or or dial into a specific color key um this allows you to do so and it does happen to have a freaking awesome little display there um so first of all it allows you to if i scroll down right now it's actually changing right and it's going to more of a yellowish kind of light and if i dial it up again yeah, we're back to that, like, really white, kind of what they call daylight. But, I mean, I, I would say it's more, like, fluorescent looking, you know, very professional. It's very bright. If I were to turn off my existing lighting rig, I, I could probably configure this in a way that it could work. Al albeit, it, it might look like, you know, kind of a low-lit environment. But, you know, maybe a, a live stream or a, a photo or a video or whatever you're trying to do with this particular lighting, it, it could work. Or you could buy multiple of these because these only come in at $45.99. So I think it's a heck of a steal for what it is. Now, so that's what this first wheel does. But the, uh, the second wheel is the dim wheel. So yeah, I can just kind of dial it back a little bit. That was at 100%, by the way. And I'm going to bring it down. Because usually what I do for a lot of my lights is I only dial them in at like 10%. And it looks like very natural and just fine. And you're not seeing like massive, you know, washed out bits of my face from the from the light being so bright. So that's what I try to do with my key light airs that I have here in, in my studio. But yeah, I mean, I could even bring this thing down. <laughs> yeah, you can bring it down to zero. So this is it at 1%, which, yeah, negligible. But I mean... If you needed to use it at 1% for some reason, this, <laughs> the options are there. So I'm going to bring it back up to 100% for our testing. That way we can 
showcase like different colors and stuff like that and see what we like. Okay, so next thing you can do is you can push in the top button again and this is actually, let me, this is actually a green light. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm using a green screen here, so. But I, if I shine on the desk, you can see, yeah, it's like, it's a green light. Um, you can also pretty much do the same thing here. You can pull down. And it changes up the hue a little bit. So now it's kind of a yellowish color, which I know using a green screen to showcase is somewhat horrible. Uh, you can bring it all the way up. You get into green. You get into sort of an aqua blue now. So we're dialing through all the, all the various color options that they have. And they happen to have a nifty little chart right here that shows you all of the numbers here. So we went all the way down to 60 to hit yellow, right? And let me actually showcase that again. So we were reaching the 200s, starting to get into blue. Okay, so now we're back at green at about, you know, 100 and something. Okay, now we're below. Okay, we're at 60. We're starting to get into the yellows. And then right now you should see that my desk is turning red. Yep, red comes up pretty well and then now it cycles to the top of the scale to 360 where you're sort of getting like red and pink and stuff like that so I mean yeah you you got a lot of shades to deal with right here and you can just cycle through you can find purple you can find blue and then this is not even where it ends like I mean you can still you can still dial in the brightness you can still Go into another setting here, which I'll showcase shortly. Let's leave it on blue. Um, let's find like a nice shade of blue. Let's do blue 240 right there. Like that's a nice like <laughs> lightsaber color. All right. So if we push that same power button again. Okay, there's a lot of settings actually. So once we set our hue, we push it again. And then it says S. So on the uh, the previous screen, it said H, but now here it says S, and this allows us to set our saturation. So we had it at the brightest where it was blue as can be, but I can turn it down. This is 10%. And yeah, it is sort of a, a white light now, but it does have that hint of blue to it. So if you, if you needed that for a specific project, um, you may want to configure this light to blue so you can get like a cold or even a dark looking, you know, a lot of people will shoot like night scenes with blue light or, you know, for like sunset or whatever, you know, they might go into yellow and then try to mess with the saturation a little bit to where it's not just the color yellow blasting at you, but, you know, just sort of a soft yellow light of like a lamp or a candle or whatever scene you're trying to set for whatever video you're trying to do. So yeah, I can bring the saturation all the way back up it's back at a hundred percent once again you can still control the dimness with with the dim wheel which the dim wheel is always the second wheel there's only two wheels there's the wheel here that we use to, to mess with saturation and hue and stuff like that but we always press the button in to get to the next screen so surprisingly it's it's a very simple concept all right this next one says scene and right here you can see that this is the fireworks scene. It's just alternating through like random colors, right? Which is cool. And once again, we, you can control the brightness of that. So if I start scrolling through the wheel here, this is a lightning one. So yeah, just every once in a while, it'll just flash white as lightning would. So I mean, if you wanted to sort of portray that, if you're making some sort of video, you could do that. This one's called fire engine. It just alters between red and white colors, and it flashes at this random interval. Uh, once again, here's ambulance, so it does white and blue. So yeah, maybe you're like shooting some sort of video and you want to appear as if there's a police car, you know, in front of you and you don't want to show the police car because then you'd have to hire them to come out there. This one's the cop car one. I, I actually really like this one. I could see that you could use this in a variety of situations if you were 
you know, if you were filming some sort of, you know, detective miniseries or something, you know, it switches between red and blue. And it looks great. Pretty realistic. Okay, um, if we scroll to the next one, this is HSI Fast. So what this is doing right now is it's actually just going between all the different colors. <laughs> as soon as they hit green. Oh, green screens are so much fun. I, I gotta tell you. Um, then there's HSI Slow. So this is going to go through the colors even slower. So it's at yellow. It's getting into kind of a green right now. <laughs> it's coming into light blue. Yeah, really great, honestly. Um, blue flash. So it just occasionally flashes blue. Occasionally fat flashes green, red. Um... HL beam right here. So it just kind of does like a switch between high and low beam. And then we're back to emergency. I guess you could use this kind of like an SOS. Um, paparazzi, this one just makes it, you know, like you could use this with your camera, but I mean, you'd have to time the photo precisely, but I, I would recommend just flashing the white light. I mean, yeah, if you were trying to make some sort of short film or something and you wanted it to look like, you know, someone was being photographed by a large amount of cameras and you don't have a lot of cameras with flash or maybe you don't even own a flash apparatus at all, this, this little device can do just that. So here's the RGB strobe, which, yeah, it's going to alter between all those colors without that smooth transition. It's really just flashing, okay? Uh, then here's the strobe. I don't want to kill anyone here, but yeah, it's it's pretty stroby. Yeah, very much so. Um, then you have pulsing. So yeah, it just kind of slowly brightens and then slowly dims. And it's doing all that automatically. And then fault bulb. This I don't know. It's like there's a lot of settings here. This is just meant to act like a faulty bulb that's like flashing or whatever. Okay, and now you're to the party, which, you know, it's just going to switch between random colors once again. Here's candle, which, you know, just seems to have dialed into like a nice, you know, soothing, soft, yellowish light. And then here's the TV, which, you know, once again, we're getting into like, stuff that's not super necessary but what this is doing is it's actually not just main yeah you notice it's like occasionally doing what a tv would do occasionally the tv's going to show an image that's darker and when the light hits your face it's going to be a little less bright but then you know it goes to the next screen and maybe it's really bright white colors and then you know it flashes so i mean that's a realistic depiction but like goodness gracious how are you going to use all these various settings there's a lot of variety here, and so I'm I'm almost saying it's a bad thing because it's more settings that you have to toggle through, but it's a great thing to have all these tools in your toolkit. So now we're back to the fireworks setting, as you can see on the display here. So uh, you can just simply push in that, you know, this power selector button that we're using. And now we're back, and we're able to dial in, once again, just choosing our... Our default, you know, you can set in this 2500K, which is getting us kind of that like yellowish light. And then if we take it all the way up to like 5K, we're getting that like really bright white light. So the, the range that it has is it goes 25K to 9000K uh, color temperature regulation here. So that's pretty cool. That's a lot of option there. You can get really warm lights. You can get really cool lights. And then, of course, you've got your 20 effect modes, all, all those various special effects that we just went through. You have a 360 degree adjustable color hue system, which we kind of showcase that going between all the various colors. So you can create like really inspiring videos or photos or whatever you're trying to do with this product. It's a nifty little thing for $45. It's got a lot of settings. Um, it's got a lot of versatility. Now, 
this the the lighting thing itself is not really the only thing that we're getting here so i'm going to actually turn it off for a second while we show what else comes in this nifty little amazon box okay so one of the items is actually this nifty little tripod as seen here so yeah it's it's a rather small tripod if we compare them in size there um but what's interesting about it is that you pull these out and you you've got your rinky dinky little plastic tripod but obviously you see the problem here this little stick you know you're not going to be able to use the actual legs of the tripod right well actually this is just a convenient way to store it so right now you could mount your phone you could mount the light on here and use this as a nifty like you know just handheld grip but when you want to actually use it as a tripod you know of course you're using it for easy storage until you open it up and then right now you actually unscrew the pole and then you flip it over because it does have that that quarter inch screw and you put it on top right there and then right there you can screw in your lighting your camera whatever it is and of course it extends which you know not a lot but i mean you know it's pretty good for like desk mounting and then of course we can use the vertical or the horizontal screw either one whichever one works best for you and you can screw that in which is great also it comes with this this is a wonderful little stabilizer and you can just screw that in and then you've got another screw right here to stabilize this and what's great about this is i mean you can really you can mount your device to it right but then you've got the the rotating ball here and you could set it like this if you wanted to have your device you know mounted vertically like this you know sitting on top of your camera or something like that or you could just rotate the ball and then boom it's in horizontal mode but the only problem with this is that this is a very cheap version of of this device here so it doesn't come with the little bubble uh, that most tripods and other devices would have that would show you that, hey, you have this perfectly level and stabilized. So, I mean, this is kind of cheap rinky-dinky stuff, but I guess it's better than nothing. Um, I, I don't see it as a con t for them to have thrown this in. I mean, I, I would just say that it's weird that it doesn't have a leveler because trying to do this by sight is, is going to have you sort of, you know, just staring at this dumb thing for hours trying to get perfectly level and stabilized now the next thing this thing just completely baffles me i'm i'm really unsure i looked in the instructions and descriptions and stuff and there's really no good description what this is for but once again we have this mount here which is great for your camera right you can cold shoe mount this on to you know the hot shoe of your camera which is where you would put like a flash or a mic or whatever you know you if you're a camera operator you've probably seen these things before right so this thing just slides on to the top of your camera and then of course the quarter inch screw will get your device good to go well what this does is this thing slides on to that and then you're able to you know mount this or the or your phone and then you're also able to like squeeze this to make these claws open up and i was like yeah you could use that to like hold something some sort of device or some sort of whatever i mean i you have screws on this like i don't know why you would use this to like slip this in there and hold it or do it to your phone or anything else i mean this just seems kind of useless and dumb to me but maybe it actually means something and i'm just unaware uh, but this is a nifty little gadget that they did include. So, I mean, having the mounts, good thing, plus. Now, this thing that came with it, you can use this, of course, of course, obviously. Um, you can use this for your your lighting. If you didn't want to, like, screw it in or if you're you're in a pinch or whatever, you have other devices that you're using. And then, of course, you can also attach the cold shoe thing right here. So you got that in there you can just tighten all the screws but here's here's what's great you do have that option right so you do have the option for the cold shoe 
but you also have the um is the quarter inch screw on the bottom of this you have this quarter inch screw on the back so i mean however you need to mount this thing they're giving you options right so here's the even better thing like maybe even try to mount your device like this using some sort of screw apparatus and and maybe have your phone in here you know you can come up with all sorts of creative ideas of how you want to do it um yeah you could potentially like screw this on to a tripod or a grip or something and then use the cold shoe mount and then screw this on and have your lighting you know right above your phone which would be perfect for doing like TikTok videos or whatever whatever you need in order to get the job done but it's it's a pretty clever little pack and 45 bucks is a pretty good and competitive price it's it's pretty inexpensive um and of course boom got all of these quarter inch screws galore and then of course when you want to pack up your little tripod you just simply do so and screw that into that screw there there's a lot of screws here so a lot of that being done and then you can just close all this up and it's good to go easy and all this stuff can easily just fit into your camera bag it's relatively small all these attachments you know just decide what you need on a regular basis as to whether you need to carry all these various devices but once again i have to say that this not so great because if you want good photos you want to make sure that things are leveled properly and this looks like it's it's not giving you that um so this is really a cheapo thing and i i'm also unsure why it's rattling in there i don't know if they just put something in there um or or if it's just like some sort of cheap part there uh the only other thing i would mention is that this is not the greatest fo phone grip or or grip for the device itself um it is cheap plastic and you can hear the spring in there so i mean it's like its life is not incredibly long so if you want to buy you know or you already have like one that's made out of metal or more durable parts are less likely to break down over time this will be great for a good while you know years or depending on how rough you are with it you know how many times you open and close it but i feel like cheap plastic and springs probably not long for this world but you know what for the price you're getting you're getting a lot here you're getting a lot of stuff that you would normally have to just go out and be like oh 20 bucks for this 20 bucks for this 20 bucks for a tripod you know like it yeah it's just unbeatable in that sense so i i have to say this is pretty good this is a nifty little thing i can't wait to put it through more of its paces and it's such a nifty thing and i've i've been running it on just one charge for now i haven't even had to charge it and i've used it on in a couple of variety of situations here um and i i think i highly recommend this especially if you're on a budget a lot of these led rgb lights um are often very expensive and then some of them may or may not be bright enough i could not find anywhere on their site or or anywhere online that would showcase what the lumens were on this which is how we measure like how bright light is but i mean i do say that's it's, it's comparable with all the other led lights that i own whether it's the two key light airs that i have here this thing is pretty freaking bright so i gotta say it's probably clocking in pretty high on those charts and even using it at 10 percent is about what i do for the other lights in my collection because you know you don't want to be staring into this all the time i feel like that could do some pretty good damage to your eyes so once again i'd like to thank you for watching if you found this review helpful or informative definitely hit that like button subscribe to the channel ring the notification bell and if you have any questions or concerns or if you've purchased this product yourself and want to let me know your thoughts about it leave it down in the comments down below um i just have to say that I think uh, it's a nifty little product and it's going to get the job done and it's a helpful little piece of equipment that won't take up too much space in my camera bag, which you're always vying for space versus weight in that area. So take care, be safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.